because it's a war on truth, I think we have no uh, choice but to wage a war on woke. On day one, we are going to rip the politics out of the military. We're going to end the woke agenda. Woke is ultimately assault on the truth. We've made Florida the state where woke goes to die. And as president, uh, I will fight the woke in the corporations. I will fight the woke in the schools. I will fight the woke in the halls of Congress. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. That is 2024 Republican presidential candidate, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, and his Stop Woke rally cry. It's the centerpiece of his campaign. It's an issue, a top focus for some Republicans, at least many among Iowa voters. In the latest NBC News Des Moines Register Mediacom poll, 65% of likely Iowa Republican caucus goers say fighting the left's woke agenda would make them more likely support a candidate. So what does that mean exactly? What does woke mean? Here to answer that, MSNBC correspondent Tremaine Lee. Tremaine, good morning. What'd you find? Good morning. So I know everyone loves a good game of debate bingo, right? You hear a certain word, you take a, a shot or a sip of your, your beverage of choice. Ooh. Mine's happen to be bourbon, right? I'm with you on that. <laughs> but I want to add a word for tonight's debate. And it's woke, right? People have heard it in the mouths of folks like uh, Governor Ron DeSantis and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump. But many folks might be surprised about the origins of the word woke with roots in black resistance and black culture. Check it out. And I think By now, now you've probably heard it. This woke ideology. Weak and woke. Wokeism. Over. Woke lunacy. And over. Woke beliefs and policies. And over again. Woke has become a charged political catch-all phrase, often used as a battering ram and a battle cry, and to many, a slur. It's almost another way of saying black. It's another way of saying the N-word. They weaponized the civil rights movement and said it was a communist movement. Before it was a pejorative, woke was about black safety and empowerment. In the early 20th century, when Jim Crow had its grip on America, white supremacist danger and violence was a constant threat. So black folks had to keep their eyes open, literally and figuratively. They had to stay woke. But what's the, the real actual definition of the term woke? It's to be awake to what's happening around you, particularly when it comes to systemic injustice. The roots of woke run deep to the heart of black America's fight for equality. In the 1930s, blues man Huddy Ledbetter, AKA Leadbelly, penned a protest song in honor of the Scottsboro Boys, a group of black teens falsely accused in Alabama of raping two white women. And since then, it has become part of the cultural lexicon. And that's what it's always meant to black people for almost 100 years now. By the late 80s, Woke was showing up in black art, like Spike Lee's classic film, School Days. Wake up! And later, given new electricity by neo-soul artist Erica Badu after the killings of Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown. And in 2020, Woke crossed over from black culture to the mainstream, following the murder of George Floyd. No one was talking about woke as much as we have in the last two years, right? This was in speak in the black community. I think there was a, t a lot of terror in seeing what was happening in 2020, seeing the multi-racial, multi-ethnic um, coalitions of people who really rallied around, like understanding more about anti-blackness, understanding more about systemic racism. Today, woke has become an ideological lightning rod and dividing line a warhead in the latest culture wars. Once it became like political football, particularly as we see with the GOP, it, it seemed like a mass message went out. Wokeness is what we're targeting. They mean it as a slur, but the people who are for these policies, for these specific goals, who think that I want my children to learn about the history of this country and not just the white history of this country, that's not a slur to me. And if you call it woke or whatever you call it, I am proud of representing those things and I want them in policy.
So woke has become this phrase that means everything and nothing at all. But for many people in the community who grew up saying stay woke to make sure you keep your eyes open to, to some of the forces that have been oppressing black folks in this country, uh, this is concerning that now this word has been weaponized against the very community uh, and those who support the community who created it in the first place. Yeah, it was extraordinary to see here Lead Belly a hundred years ago singing mm. with the, about the Scottsboro Boys using the stay woke. So as you say, this has become a catch-all. And we hear it from school board meetings, and we hear it around Bud Light, and we hear it, this this idea of wokeism. What do you think it means to a Trump supporter or to a Republican voter who really has latched on to this idea? You know, that's, it's part of the, the playbook that we've seen time and again is really who controls the narrative. And I think for many people who are afraid of the changes in America, we have this conversation all the time, that America is changing. It's getting more black. It's getting more immigrant. The accents are changing a little bit. Um, it's scary for a lot of people. And so to use this as kind of a, a battering ram, a cudgel, but also a rallying cry, saying we have to fight these forces and it's this wokeness. Many of these people have never heard that term used in any other context besides the one they're being fed right now. You know, it's, it's fascinating what, what we're seeing now in the Republican Party's remain, where you actually even had Donald Trump a couple months ago going, I don't even know what it means. I'm tired of talking about it, which means he's a couple of steps ahead of Ron DeSantis and the rest of them as far as just the sheer exhaustion. I know months ago when I started hearing woke this, woke that, it was kind of like the CRT debate. After a while, CRT was a catch-all to everything. And, and I read an interview in the Times, they were talking to a Republican out of Pennsylvania, they're talking about wokeism. She said, listen, if you don't want to drink Bud Light, don't drink Bud Light. If you don't want to go to Disney, don't go to Disney. But I don't want the government declaring some sort of anti-woke war against private businesses. I just found it fascinating that even for a, a lot of Republicans, there's this exhaustion about the word being misused and overused. Joe, many people can see through the, the shenanigans, the political shenanigans, right? This stuff takes the place of actual, real political debate in this country. And while people are hungry, while people are struggling to get jobs, uh, they are, in fact, tired of this. It still works for a certain segment of, of the voting population. Uh, but people are fed up because you can see through it. And so it's cute and it's silly and it's like these great little punchlines. But at a certain point, the American public, right and left, actually want solutions and answers. And they're not getting it with uh, ploys like uh, this anti-woke agenda. Great context around this debate from MSNBC correspondent Tremaine Lee. Tremaine, good to see you. Likewise. Still had a key witness.